Hello and welcome. This is a Fantasy Grounds Unity tutorial. I'm going to be covering setup for a character, and this will be character creation. I'm going to do this in steps. So the first part or the first video will be just setting up the interface and loading your library content. So um, in this view, I'm assuming that you already have at least a subscription or a license, um, also some content. So if you do not own any content or a license, I apologize. Uh, this is more for in mind for people who actually have purchased a license or upgraded or perhaps they already have content. So if that is you, this will be a good video for you. Um, if you have not purchased a license or you are not subscribed or you don't have any content, you can still connect to a person who does and build a character. So most of this video will apply to you, but this very beginning part may not, and also some of the uh, other features that, that may come up during these videos. So um, with that in mind, I am founder of Room for Fantasy Grounds College, and this is video one, and we're going to go into the actual setup and the creation of a session, or in this case, they call it a campaign. So first things first, the name. So this, this name for this campaign is just going to be tutorial series. And the reason I'm doing these is to help the community, but also I haven't done one in a while that updates anything. So I wanted you to see that it's pretty much the same in Unity as it is in the Classic. I picked the 5e rule set. That is the one I'm most familiar with, but if you are into some of the other rule sets, you can choose those as well. Um, over here in the extensions, I have just added basically uh, a font, which allows a little bit clearer visibility. Uh, this is not an official font. This is a community-developed one. This is made by Matt Akure, um or John Waits. He has this posted in the official Fantasy Grounds forums. He's made two, one for Classic and one for Unity. So if you want to search for font Monsterot, uh, take a look for that. Um, if you want to put a password or a Game Master tag in here, you can do so. I'm going to be in a private sex. A segment or a private session, so I don't really need to, to change any of that. And every Tuesday or so, Fantasy Grounds puts out new um, content and releases, and if you're in beta right now, which is what this program is, this is actually Uni Unity Beta, and I have the launcher dated from 4-4-2020, so you want to make sure that you have the latest launcher and your players, because if you don't, you might have connection issues. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is where you would basically start and set up your, your actual um, session. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And while that's loading, I will tell you that Fantasy Grounds College is basically a community that was developed about three years ago. Um, we're basically just helping people learn Fantasy Grounds, learning the culture, how to get used to using it. Um, you know, just basically supporting the community with the information that we learn but on our own. So a lot of this is just a private, you know, or a public uh, community that basically just accepts you into the Discord community. Uh, we have a, a website, fantasygroundscollege.net. Uh, you can find our um, join um, link to our community on the front page. And what we're going to do is just kind of help you out in the community. So if you join us and these videos are not enough, um, we'll help you get through the rest. We have DM classes. We have map making classes. We teach, you know, we have Lua and um, C Sharp, C++ classes happening now occasionally. And we have all kinds of workshops. We have developers and artists and all kinds of talented people. So if you want to... Um, participate in that sort of community you're welcome to um, we don't normally support or host campaigns but we do have one shots for practice games occasionally so if you want to just kind of try it out a little bit we might be able to get into one of those but mainly our claim to fame is teaching fantasy grounds and a lot of it ends up being dungeons and dragons because of the popularity but there are some uh pathfinder 2 starfinder savage worlds vampire you know other rule sets too 
Um, but generally, most of the stuff is centered around DD 5e because of the pop. So I apologize for that. That's just basically by the demand of the public. Um, if you are a champion of any one of those other rule sets that I mentioned, uh, please come on in and help us uh, teach it. I definitely need the help, and we don't necessarily want our community just to be all Dungeons and Dragons. So anyhow, um, this is the very front end of Fantasy Grounds when you first start. Now this assumes that you're the host. Um, in some of the things I'm going to be showing you, players cannot do without their assistance of their game master. But this campaign setup window is fairly new. It just came out about a year and a half ago. This is something that um, SmiteWorks very smartly introduced to help people get started. So on these first three page, this first three uh, links here on this page for the user manual, this is important to not bypass that. Um, the user manual isn't perfect, but it does go over a lot of what the buttons are and it gives you a layout, it does some tutorials in there. Um, but for the most part, it, it it's just mainly kind of to help you get, get around the interface, which is some of the things I'm going to go over now. The wiki user guides go straight to a website where they maintain their wiki guides. And then if you need help in the forums, which is the best place to go to ask for help, uh, the forums is there. I'm hoping someday that we'll get our own button over here for the college so that uh, this would be like an additional resource. We'll see. So I'm going to hit next. Um, the data module libraries. So if you do not own Fantasy Grounds outright and you just have a license, you can load the SRD and the basic rules, which will just give you enough data to kind of get a taste of, of Fantasy Grounds. But I do recommend if you got the time and the money and you have the resources to go ahead and get the core books at least um, if you're a game master. If you were a player, you probably just only want to get the player's So I'm not pushing sales for SmiteWorks or Wizards of the Coast, but if you want to make your own content and not rely on somebody else, you'll want to eventually get those. Um, besides that, um, you know, there's tokens that you can get. There are um, third-party programs that you can get, like applications to help Fantasy Grounds um, operate a little differently or more, um, a little easier, like. Uh, you know, like um, life, uh, kind of make ease of life things uh, happen. But Unity right now, being that it's so new, I would not try a lot of the extensions out there yet until they are rewritten and confirmed. And also, a lot of the third-party modules out there do not have line of sight built into them yet. So if you buy some things from the DMs Guild and you really like the content, you might have to build the line of sight maps yourself, depending on what the modules are. So with that in mind, um, now that I have this main content loaded, I have the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Player's Guide uh, for the Dungeon Master. I have the Monster Manual and the Player's Handbook. So those are your core books. If I hit uh, Next, I'm going to go to Options, and this is basically the last page. This is a little different than Classic. Classic actually took you to a Tokens page. But now all the tokens and artwork are stored in assets, so we'll go through that later. But as far as um, setup goes, there's your library that you're basically loading, and this is your setup window. If you don't want this to come back up again, you click on this little bubble where it says Show on Load, and then click Finish, and that will not come back up the next time you join the table. So I'm going to go ahead and take you to the module area. So you're familiar with where that is. So in your library in the bottom right, if you are the host, you are by default going to be in Game Master mode. If you are just a player connected to somebody else, more than likely you'll be in just play mode. But for character creation, you want to change up here to Create PC. And that way you have all these different um, banners to work with that do not have to do with anything else other than character creation. And then I'm going to add one more for the class later, which is going to be the parcels. So parcels are generally treasure chests, but I'm going to use this later for other things. So right now I just have the core books loaded. I'm going to go into the modules folder, and I'm going to load a few other of my favorites. Now these will be third party, 
These are not sold on the DMs Guild or Steam, and they are also not um, free. So if you want to purchase these, you can go on to the Dungeon Masters Guild and find these. He's the Rob 2E Coding Effects Package. And he has a lot of other utility modules that are very helpful for character creation. Now, you don't have to use these, but during this tutorial, I will show them. And I'm going to also show that they still work in the Unity um, interface. So I'm going to go ahead and load those. So one of them is very helpful is this 5e background and class equipment. I'm going to go ahead and load that. And that's going to give us all our background equipment and all our uh, class equipment in a bundle instead of dragging everything one at a time. I'm going to add the 5e conditions and effects. This is helpful for NPCs or when you need to, to come up with an effect quickly. Uh, they are stored in this little effects button up here. And what they do is they give the DM more options as to conditions and effects that you may want to apply to either your players or to NPCs. So that's kind of a a useful tool to have. The other is the 5e um, class features, the effects coding. This covers all the class features, including all the new books, including Wild Mount and all those other uh, Eberron and everything else. So he's he keeps those updated. So when you purchase these, you have to go and re-download them eventually when new books have come out because he's usually pretty up on that so he'll have the modules updated within days of release uh, sometimes the same day so here decoding effect feats I'm gonna load that just in case I'm gonna have some racial traits and then the spells so those are everything you'll need for character creation you have a lot of other things in here like the magic items he has all those coded he has a bunch of tables and useful tools for creating characters and for game masters. But for the most part, that is all I'm going to load at this point. And then I have the core books. But if I wanted to, let's say, load Xanathar, provided you own it, I'm going to go ahead and just type it in the search field, and I'm going to click on Load. And if you notice, there's a green check. That means that players have access to it. So if you are the host or the game master and you own the content, you can choose or control which content is shared. If you want to unshare it, you just click on that little link there and it will block the books. In this case, there's no point in doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and load Xanathars. The next book I want to load is Volo's Guides to Monsters. This gives you some unique options for like bugbears and goblins and such. So if you want to make a character like that, uh, you'll want to have Volo's Guide. The next is Morden Canons. Morden Canons Tome of Foes adds more character options, so I'm going to load that. This gives you access to different races and backgrounds and spells and such. I'm going to load the Elemental Evil Player's Guide. So this was a, a setting, but it also included some races and such um, that came from this supplement. So I'm going to go ahead and load that. A lot of the settings that are out there will give you a couple of new backgrounds or maybe a new race. So it depends on what you buy, but they try to include one or two you know, little treasure chests so that you're interested in buying the the adventure, not just for the adventure itself, but for some of the features it offers. Um, then there's some other niche things that you can load, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and load the Eberron. So you have uh, the older Eberron module. The one I'm loading is the Rising from the Last War, the Player's Guide. That is the one that contains some different races and classes, such as the Alchemist. Or the Artificer, however it's called. And then there is an equipment guide that I absolutely love that is available on the DMs Guild. It is awesome. Uh, Matakire converted it. 
and it is a good supplement to have for 5th edition. This also includes weapons and armor that were not included in the 5th edition rule set. Some of these go back to, to the 2nd edition, and there's a bunch more stuff in here. So this equipment guide is very, very uh, comprehensive, as it's entitled. It was put out by Wraithrite Productions, but John Waite, Matt Akure, and Rob Tui, uh they converted that for us for Fantasy Ground. So that's one of my favorite uh, equipment modules. I, I think it's kind of a must-have if you like unique equipment. Uh, it's definitely a big piece of work. It is definitely worth the money. Uh, I would definitely get that. You don't have to have it, though, to build characters because you have all the standard equipment. I just like having that in my arsenal in case I want to make something unique. So I have most of the character creation books that are available. I might, oh, I need the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. Also known as Skag. Um, this is the player's part of it. Um, you load that up if you want unique backgrounds and things that are more meshed in with the Forgotten Realms. So if you do a lot of adventuring in the Forgotten Realms, that's a good book to have. So that's pretty much all I'm going to load right now. I think that's enough stuff in the library. Um, if you want to see what you actually already have loaded, you can click on All. Of course, I need to get rid of my search criteria. And this will show you everything that you have loaded. So it sorts it out by that. But I'm going to unload the player's part of the DM's guide because it, it offers you a couple things, but they're really not needed. It's like an evil cleric or something like that. So I just unloaded that. And then anything else that I may not need. Um, so for instance, the condition effects, I probably won't need that for character creation, so I'm just going to unload that. And basically, all I'm going to do is try to focus on the books that I do need instead of just loading everything. So I'm just trying to kind of sort through that, make sure it's good. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to click on load it again, and that takes me back to the module selection, and that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, and in the library view, if you are new to Fantasy Grounds and you're wondering where the heck all your books are, well, they're loaded now. And if you want to access them, if you own them, or even if you have the SRD, you want to click on the Player's Handbook or the applicable book. Look for the reference manual. And I'm going to close the library. And this is the reference view of any book that you might have, especially the official ones. And you click on this header up here. And it actually gives you a breakdown of all the different chapters. So you have the introduction. You have creating a character, and which I'm going to cover in this series. Um, if you need help with this, um, you can come to the college. Or if you go into the reference manual, it gives you a suggested order of build. So the order of character creation is very important. I will go through that in the next tutorial. Um, until next time, I will see you again, and hopefully you will be able to follow along. Bye-bye.